here this evening with Dan's friends and family for uh, really recognizing and celebrating not just a book and not just books on Dublin, but Dan's real love of Ireland, <laughs> which uh, is really extraordinary. Um, in some ways it's extraordinary and in some ways it's not. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank Bessie for going with him. That, I think, is actually the best version of that song I've ever heard. And I've heard it a lot. It, it's a beautiful sentiment, and the whole thing, I, I'm from Galway originally, and um, uh, I still have family living there, and I go back regularly, and it, it's actually quite emotional to hear it sung like that. It's really nice. Uh, but I think, um, when Dan came to me first, when we met first, uh, shortly after I arrived, I was struck by a few things. One, his absolute enthusiasm for Ireland, his absolute bang on enthusiasm. <laughs> uh, and the other thing was that he probably knew more about Dublin than I did. <laughs> he knew more about, you know, how to, how to do the traffic, how to do the buses, the trains, where to visit, where, everything. He was just fantastic. Uh, so when he came to me, kind of almost selling a book in Romanian that would encourage people to travel to Ireland, it was kind of a no-brainer. It was, you know, where do we sign up? You know, it was great. And then something happened, and it was COVID, and that kind of put a damper on things. Uh, but in some ways, it actually wasn't a bad time, because it gives people an opportunity to read about where they might go when things get better. So I know Dan was selling the book during, you know, when people weren't travelling. And I hope they got as much pleasure from it um, as almost visiting. Because it, 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 Dan was talking about the history of Ireland and our tragic history. And we have a tragic history. It's a hundred years since our independence. Since we earned our independence. And just immediately after independence, we had a civil war because there was part of the country that was essentially kept under British rule. And that meant that people were fighting, people who had fought together a few months previously were now fighting against each other. And this had a very, very difficult impact on our society for many years afterwards. Many of those who fought against the British actually left Ireland and travelled to America and travel to Britain because we had this thing of immigration. Now, we have had immigration in our country for probably 200 years or more. Uh, we had some terrible events like famine. We lost half our population, four million people uh, between 1840 and 1850, through immigration and through death. So our history has not been, has been tragic. And I think actually to have understand that history. <clears throat> because in that tragedy, there's humor. And some of the humor in that tragedy, Dan brings out. Uh, one of the things being, uh, he tells a story about something called Nelson's Pillar. And Nelson's Pillar was a big monument to the center of Dublin. And it was to a guy called Admiral Nelson, who fought Napoleon at what, at, um, Trafalgar, and this big monument was built in the middle of Dublin to him. So when we gained our independence, there was a question, what do we do? What This thing is in the middle of our city. So for 50 years it was left there. And then in 1966, somebody in the middle of the night put jelly night under the pillar and blew it up. And this... Irish demolition. Irish demolition. But it was funny because Somebody wrote a song immediately afterwards about it. That was kind of a bit like the Fabi Jew. And it was called Up Went Nelson. <laughs> and it was at the top of the Irish charts for eight weeks. People loved this. So there is a humour in our tragedy. And that humour, I think, our songs are sad, but they can also be lively and they can be everything. Emotional. Yes, thank you. Emotional. And I think that's what Dan gets about us. And I think it's actually something like Romanian history. I don't want to kind of, but, but Romanian history is kind of tragic as well. And you're, you have, immigration is both a tragedy and something good. 
it, it, it's bad at the time it's happening because people are leaving and they're leaving family and they're leaving villages. But there is something gained as well when people are in other countries. And for us, Irish America was very important. We had Irish people in America, Irish people in Britain. All of these things became very important to us. They became very important for our income in the 1960s before we got better off. Most of our income, the, the biggest part of our income, our national income, was from people sending money home. So these things are, are things that happen today in, 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 in other countries and in Romania, people send money home. So these things are important. <laughs> so I think all of that, um, all of that can be a positive. And the other thing is there are, I think, almost 100,000 people of a Romanian speaker, speakers, let's say, uh, Moldovan and Romanian, in Ireland today. And that, is, I think, is, it's good for Ireland, obviously, because all of these, all, all of these people are working in Ireland. Uh, but it's also good for Romania because a lot of people will gain skills in Ireland and they will come back and they will do things in Romania as well. And I know that's happening already. So these things can be difficult. But the other thing, I, I, I mean, just to say a few things about Ireland, just in the way things have gone in the last 50 years. The first 50 years of independence were terrible. We, we had people leaving. We had, very poor country, we had no investment, we had no roads, and everybody was giving out, and they were wondering, should we have done this at all? And then we joined the European Union in 1973, and this is our 50th anniversary of joining. And okay, nothing really improved for the first 20 years of that, and even 30 years, and there was still immigration, and Irish people left still because we had no investment. But from 1990 onwards, things changed completely. And today we are net contributors to the European Union. And now 16% of our workforce were born outside of Ireland. So we've had people coming into Ireland. It has improved and it is a much wealthier place. And Dan talks about the, in his, in his book and, and his guide, he talks about the cheap things to do in Dublin and there's lots of it. There's free stuff. Yes. Transport isn't awful expensive. There's really things that you can do, but it's not a cheap city. But if you read Dan's book, you will find <laughs> how to do things on a budget, and it works. So I think that I hope Dan's book encourages people to visit Ireland for themselves and to see Ireland. This this tonight, this is really reminds me of when I was younger and in college in Galway, and this is exactly the kind of place we used to go. <laughs> the music identical. It's the music. It's newer. It's not the music, but it's 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 the same type of atmosphere that we grew up with. In a pub, few few drinks, few pints, music in the background, not in the background, in the foreground, listening. Uh, but it's really reminiscent. This is a real Irish atmosphere in place. So it's really pleasant to be here tonight, and it's really pleasant to be in this atmosphere, in this kind of way. It's just really nice. And, and I want to thank Dan for tonight. I want to thank him for writing the book for having this interest in Ireland, for selling us, because we need to be sold, and also for doing the hard work. Dan came to me with a book. He didn't come to me with an idea or with anything. It was all done. It was very easy for me. Uh, but it was, to, to put in the research and to do all the work was really fantastic. So, Dan, thank you so thank much, you. and thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you.